Introducing Reyna Huja, founder at Gulp, an app that connects you to your favorite food trucks, and PM at Checkbook. Hello, Brain. What's up, Book? How are you doing? I'm living the dream. Nice. Cool, man. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so I went to school at the University of Illinois. I studied physics, and I just moved to San Francisco to work at Checkbook.io, where I'm an associate product manager. So. Yeah, earning my stripes, but yeah, a bit about me. Cool. Crazy about entrepreneurship. I uh, just got into developing, which I guess is what he's going to talk about. So, uh, yeah. So you studied physics, but you're here in a programming job. So, like, were you programming on the side in college, or like, when did this start? Uh, I'm not in a programming job. PM doesn't really do programming much, so I, and I never did, never did it in college either, except for one project towards the end where I we built a prosthetic sensor package. So. I, uh, I guess I learned Python on spot just to do basic matplotlib um, and for data analysis of, you know, like how much data we're getting from the fingertips. So that's kind of where I f saw projects and it coming together. This was a year ago and I was pretty fascinated. I also like working in the team. So I actually hated a lot of my physics classes compared to that class. So that, that's what got me interested in building products and um, actually learning like programming. So yeah. cool. So you want to say you're a programmer, but rather you're in the technical scene. Uh, yeah, so I, um, well, I guess it started, I wanted to learn programming because I had all these ideas and I just couldn't execute on them. And I got sick and tired of being like, hey, I have an idea. Let me go talk to the five people I know that are in CS or whatever. And it just, it gets very frustrating. No one really gives a shit about your idea. And so you kind of have to learn some. Um, so I went from like no technical knowledge of like, what's the server? What's a database? How do they communicate to like, um, kind of learning it all on my own so I could build my own gulp in this case, which is what I'm doing. So, Respect. so it looks like you basically went through this process solo. You had to look at your own resources, find your own tutorials, or just ask around. What were some of the bigger difficulties you faced? Um, I mean, I'd say in the beginning, it's, it was really tough just because, you know, finding the right resource, um, like you make some headway, you realize it's not making sense. Then you go to another YouTube video, then you go all the way like, Oh, and then it stops making sense. So I would say my biggest advice and something I wish someone told me is go to Udemy and start there, pick one class, pick one language for one specific project you want to do for one specific reason. It's something you actually care about because if it's just like some idea that you don't really want to see come through, you're probably going to give up at some point. Um, the only reason I'm still going is I actually want to see the product more than I care about writing the code. I um, mean, obviously it's a you know two two way street, but um, I'm more you know dedicated to the, let me see this thing in the real world and doing whatever it takes along the way. And so start with a Udemy course um, for you know whatever it is if it's a website or if it's you know an app or you know you can you can get creative. But once you start, you'll notice it'll all come together. I um, mean, that's the cool part. So. And if we're on here, and if you're interested in mobile apps, uh, Stefan Gerder, I believe is his name, on Udemy is what I used, and I found it, uh, that was the best one I could find, so. You said something like, oh, I really want to see this project done. That's why I started yeah. with this app. So how did you... Find something out? I'm interested in, or it's passionate like, about? Through, through all the tutorials, through like, the debugging and all like the different stuff you worked on, you figured out, or when did you figure out like, oh, I really want to see, like this is what drives you? Uh, I think for me, it was the other way around where it was, I wanted to see the thing built in the first place. And I had implored like, hey, do I have any friends that write rec or create mobile apps or can someone help me out or blah, blah, blah. And at a certain point, um, I think my personality was such that I just wanted to build it myself. And that little hint of building, being on that prosthetic package like project made me realize that I like the whole building things, being around it. And I wanted to be more than the business guy, which you know, kind of what it was before. Um, and so I think a mix of those two, like, and, you know, personality thing, I don't really stop till it's done and I don't give up. So I, I mean, that's why I'm still going. Uh, and um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what it comes down to. I started with the, the idea and the product before I want to learn coding. So it was, it was the other way for me. What are some of your hobbies outside of just like tech? Um, I love playing tennis. Like I absolutely love playing tennis. Uh, I love to bike, like cycle. 
Um, I just feel like it's a really cool way to kind of just see new places or explore new coffee shops or what have you. Um, I think those are my two biggest hobbies, actually. Some sort of sport. I, I love going to the gym and the steam room. Uh, and I just love like traveling and but exploring rather than just traveling. So like going to, uh, I'm, I live in San Francisco now, so or Silicon Valley. Um, just going to a random city one day and just walking around with no intent. I think that's really fun. Um, and I'm a big foodie, uh, as as I guess gulp. You know, it's for <laughs> food trucks. So finding new places to eat and kind of balling on a budget in that regard. So yeah. Have you found your time spent in? these hobbies like gave you ideas that you brought back into tech or when you practice in the tech space you found new mindsets you could take out to those hobbies and like have you found any relationship or intersection um i mean yeah i think life i mean if you're very mindful about what you do day to day you can be bringing ideas from work to outside of work or from hobbies to work and so i think it's more important to focus on what you like and what you want to do um and you'd be surprised how you can connect the dots um like a lot of my ideas, you don't sit around in your room and get ideas. That is a the stupidest thing I've ever heard. If you want to, even if you're a skilled program developer and you don't have any ideas, you're better off going and talking to people what their problems are because code is used to solve problems. Businesses are started to solve problems. If you're not doing that, you're not really a business, nor is it useful. It's just a, hub, a project, which is fine, but be cognizant of that. So um, you're better off going out and just exploring and seeing the world um, and finding, you know, just, and seeing what you find and taking it back and discussing with people. And that's really helpful. Um, and you'd be surprised. So yeah, it's, it's, I found better to go and just live um, and be as hundred percent mindful and then come back and make sense of that rather than go out with an intention of, I need to come up with an idea because typically it doesn't work that way. And it is a muscle that can be trained in my opinion. What other lessons did you learn from this experience? Um, learning programming specific or just, yeah, specifically the tech side? Um, I would say it's, it's pretty tough, not, not to scare you off, but like, so it's going to require you to spend, like, I'm a pretty, like, I like to go out, I like to bike and be outside and, you know, I'm not, I'm not at work per se, and I work in a startup, so my hours are already pretty long. It's, it's, uh, now I've been trying to program for some time, so I'm okay with going home and spending two, three hours or in the morning, two, three hours, like Udemy classes, blah, blah, blah. But when I first started doing it, it was really hard for me to ease into that because I was one of these people that on the weekends I wanted to go out. Um, and so I, I would say start start somewhere and don't have to like, oh, I'm going to spend like the whole weekend programming 35, seven hours. It doesn't, doesn't know how it works. Maybe block off two hours and three hours and four hours and like, it is a, it's like, it is learning a language, but also the concepts. So I studied physics. So for me, logic does kind of, it's not, I don't think it's out of my realm, but especially if you're not from a technical background, uh, if then try this, try this, move there, import, it, it's get, it gets kind of confusing if you try and cram it all in one, one day over one night. So um, for me, I'd say ease into it. Number one, number two, I'd say, I think for me personally was writing concepts out was really helpful. Um, I would say also follow and finish the Udemy course. And the, I think the biggest thing is find people that support um, your idea and whatnot. Uh, a lot of people will be like, no, just hire someone else. Just push yourself. And I actually lost friends off of this. So find people that actually support you. And, you know, they're like, they're impressed, but also supportive that you're trying to learn something new. Because it's not, it's very rare that people do that in the first place. So if you're doing it, um, a lot of people will fight you on it, I think. So, yeah. and and don't let like, I've had this a few times where it's like, oh man, I don't think I'm smart enough for this. Um, I should just give up. Uh, I should just, you know, ask one of my friends to build it. I'll go on Fiverr and have someone build it for me. And so it's very easy to uh, fall into that trap of like, I'm not smart enough, which sucks, but it's, it's, don't, don't, it's, it's, um, it's possible. Just keep going, take a break, walk. Finally, what are some tips you would give to like, let's say high school students who want to get into computer science or just end up in a development type role, either PM or developer? Sure, I mean, um, especially in high school, just build cool stuff, really. I don't think, that you don't take yourselves too seriously, right? Um, I think the biggest thing, especially in high school, is something I wish is like, take genuine interest in the things you're doing um, and just go from there. It's way more important and life is just better, I think. Um, it's life be better spent if you're more interested and actually passionate about what you're doing. So don't do things because mom and dad are saying X, Y, and Z. They mean well, but it's better off for you to know what you want to do. And so also um, hang out with the right people and what 
again, what that means is people that are, I think, passionate about what they're doing. Because it's a better use of your time as well. And in terms of tech in specific, yeah, I mean, start programming. You have, you have nothing to lose in high school. Pick some, you know, I have this idea, I have that idea. Like, that's the perfect time. Or not that there's no time not to be perfect, but there's no risk, I'd say. Um, so it, it'll only help you at that age. So. Cool. And then finally, to other people, let's say other students in non, it's not like maybe like physics backgrounds or just not directly engaged with tech, mm -hmm. what would you give? So the current kids in college, people are like, so you, right, minus three, two, three years, what would you say? Uh, I would say pick a project and don't just, don't get scared off. Um, if I look back, I probably didn't pursue some of the things I should have. And I would have really enjoyed because I was scared to. Um, uh, I don't know. I I, w I wish I you know was more confident in, in that regard. Um, and that's I, I mean, that's a personal thing. It's not like I can't advise that to everyone. But it's not as scary as you think. Just go through it and do it. And be patient with yourself because that's really tough as well. Um, I'm personally very impatient, so I want results tomorrow. I want the app done tomorrow. I want the, I want the whole language in my head all of a sudden. It's not how it works. So be patient and be. I would say don't be realistic, be unrealistic in certain regard in the sense of you want to push yourself. But um, at the end of the day, it's not going to come in a week. Uh, it is a commitment and it's it's not like, a, oh, fuck yeah, all of a sudden I'm, you know, killing it. Right. So um, those are my, my three things. But the biggest thing I tell myself is surround yourself with the right people. Um, I made that mistake and I wish if I could change one thing, it'd be that. So. Finally, what are your the accomplishments or things you've done that you're most proud of? It's like your highlights. My highlights. Um, I mean, honestly, I started a club on campus for, for, for like a squash club. That was probably one of the biggest confidence boosts I had. I was just super proud to see that something that I had gone out of my way of that I didn't see out in the world, other people also didn't see. And so now there's the group's like 55 people and um, you have like, an old man who he's like he's, beside, he's like my grandfather's age and he actively plays i had someone that he was like 40 years old and he just had a kid and this is his only form of exercise and he he stopped exercising for like five years and now he has a reason to come to the gym again and I, I i've gotten to see him lose weight and he's healthy again so like for me that was really rewarding and i'm super proud of that um a because i went out of my way to create something and build something from scratch but b i saw other people benefit from it um yeah, I think so. It's probably my biggest milestone. Uh, other one was I'm a tennis coach, or I was, I guess, a tennis coach, but just getting to see the students, A, they did really well within tennis, but I got to see them grow confident off the tennis court, and they're in high school, and so seeing them kind of mature and strengthen and build up, and their parents talk to me, and you know, building those relationships was really cool for me. Um, obviously, there was a part where they did succeed, so I saw that as a tennis coach, I'm, you know, I'm there, but more importantly, I saw a boy becomes sort of a man in a weird way. You know? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Any last words? Um, no, no, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Thanks so much for writing. I will add your links in the bio. Cool. Doodles. Thanks, brother. Well, now, new angle, repeat. <laughs> <laughs>